Hello, I'm Carrie K, K Carrie on Instagram. I am going to tell you the story of all of the kitties. Um, while we watch my coloring and gothic fantasy special from Coloring Heaven by Inez Guerrero, um, I got this book through uh, trade with coffee lover underscore five that is what she is on YouTube and on Instagram um, I use a lot of different mediums on this uh, and have fun watching while I tell you all the kitty craziness um, we currently have five cats uh, we have one in the apartment upstairs, we have two in the storefront, and we have two in the basement under the storefront. Um, and it all actually started with a dog, <laughs> of all things. So, um, it actually started before that. So. When my boyfriend and I first got together in 2015, we had discussed getting cats. And I am very allergic to cats. Um, and I told him that I could still get cats, but I would have to, it, it takes, you know, two to three weeks and I would look and feel like hell and then I would be immune to that specific cat. Um, he really didn't want me to go through that, so we decided that I would go see an allergist and see what we could do with uh, allergy shots. So I started getting allergy shots. Um, the testing was insane. Uh, come to find out, I am not only allergic to cats, but I'm also allergic to dogs. I am allergic to rabbits, cockroaches, dust mites, pollen spores, and I will have horrible reactions to anything that has something that you can react to if it bites you. Uh, I am also very, very deathly allergic to bees, so I have an EpiPen. So, I started getting allergy shots. I got them for three years, I believe, until... The whole COVID thing started and they quit doing them and then I just quit doing them. Um, and I've been okay. So immunotherapy works, people. Um, I do want to say that I did not get the full you know, effect of three years of having allergy shots because I could only go up to the half dose because if we went past the half dose... Um, I would end up in the hospital. So, partially immune to animal allergies. So, there's that. But it's enough. It's enough to have multiple kitties and have animals come into my life and be around and not just immediately have poofy eyes and snotty nose and all that stuff. So, yay! Uh... Then, here's where the dog comes in, um, we ended up rescuing a dog. It was a dog that I, uh, cause I used to dog sit multiple dogs, not at the same time. It was always a singular animal at a time, but, um, it was a dog that I'd watched for a couple of years, and, uh, it turned out that he needed to have a new home, and, uh, we ended up taking him in, and had him for a couple of years. It was... A darn good two years. He was a very iffy animal, but uh, we made it work, and he made lots of friends, and he, I would do it all again. He was a fantastic dog. However, he was not good to cats, <laughs> or squirrels for that matter. Um, he actually attacked a cat while we had him, and uh, he ended up cat got away. It was fine, as far as we know. And, um, 
we did see it a few days later on somebody's porch, so it, it was alive and okay. And he got a few scratches out of the deal, so good for the kitty. Um, anywho, like I said, we had him about two years, and he um, had cancer. We knew he had cancer when we got him, and it just got to the point of being bad enough that we made the horrible decision that we had to make and uh, put him down and um, he was ready he was absolutely ready he had a good day he I think he he knew what was going on and he was ready to go so um, we did have him cremated I have his ashes they are next to my bed so he he still is sleeping next to me all the time uh, then I'd say it was the winter after we put him down, uh, there was this little black and white kitty hunkered down at the top of our back stairs, um, I'm assuming because there was heat coming out of the, under the door, I mean, it was in February-ish, uh, and mind you, if you don't know, I live in a downtown urban area, small town USA, but still downtown, um, not a good place for a kitty, lots of traffic, I am right on Main Street, like literally the two main streets in our town, and I live above the store that my boyfriend owns, so not a good place for a cat to be wandering around, um, Tried to scare it away, tried to scare it away, tried to scare it away. It wouldn't go away. It kept coming back. And then come to find out one of our tenants was feeding it. So, of course, it's going to come back. Uh, just kept coming around, kept coming around. And my boyfriend eventually just let it into the store. And I was like, crap, we're going to have a cat. <laughs> so, we ended up keeping this cat. And, um... Took her to the vet. She, well, took it to the vet. Found out it was a uh, spayed female. So she was somebody's cat at some point. Um, have no idea what her backstory is. And um, she was very appreciative. Was uh, very social. I mean, when she was outside, she would come right up to you and let you pet her, and she was filthy. I, I felt bad about that, but she was filthy. So she had to been outside for a while. And it was cold, and it was yucky. So, we're, like I said, we brought her in, and uh, I'm not sure about timeline as far as when it first happened, but she um, ended up having seizures, and uh, scary situation. I don't know if you've ever seen a cat seize, but it's not fun. And uh, took her to the vet. And, I mean, she was seemingly okay, other than, obviously, she had a seizure. And, I mean, she was conscious. I don't think she lost consciousness at all. And... They didn't want to do imaging or anything like that because... She was having a seizure, and if, you know, to do imaging, they'd have to put her out. So, didn't do imaging, just kept her stress-free, happy, comfy, all that stuff. Uh, she was a wonderful cat. She loved belly rubs. She just absolutely loved belly rubs. Um, like, she would lay beside me on the couch and have her back against my leg and I would just have my hands between legs and just rubbing her belly and rubbing her belly and she would just lay there for hours and let me rub her belly and uh, if I tried to move my hand she would actually grab it and put it back on her belly so that was our thing uh, she was very much my kitty um, it was very heartwarming and I, I really, really loved that cat. Uh, then the following winter, 
we had another kitty chilling at our back door. Um, this one, we again tried to scare it away. It didn't want to go away, so we made it a house behind our back stairs. Uh, and it was using it. We would put food and water out there, and it had some shelter. It was, you know, again, in the winter time. it's looking for warmth. So made it a house. It was using it. And then um, there was this really, really, really cold stretch. Like it was going to be in, in the 20s, below tw 20 below-ish, around in there. And we're like, crud, what are we going to do with this cat? Um... So my boyfriend went out to uh, a farm supply store and got a heated bed. And we were just going to put it in the house so it had some heat during that really, really bad cold snap. And the cat was in the house and we're like, how are we going to get this heated bed in there and not scare the cat away? And I mean, it was obviously a very scared cat. Like this cat did not want us anywhere near it so we actually ended up covering up the opening to the hole in the house and taking the cat inside the house inside of the store and down into the basement um, because we didn't want to bring it upstairs because we already had a cat up here that we didn't want to upset because it had seizures. So it was in the basement. It was a very scared kitty and it, we would go down there. We would turn lights on for daytime, turn lights off for nighttime. So it had a day and night cycle still and we would feed it and we would go down there and we would talk to him every day. I actually went down there. We put a recliner down there so I could sit down there comfortably and color and uh, I would read it stories. I'd read the kitty stories and it took me eight weeks of working with him to be able to even touch him and um, you know slowly progressed and slowly, slowly progressed to being able to you know have full-on pet and play sessions it was pretty awesome and uh we were at the point of okay what are we going to do with this cat because we still we can't take it upstairs um so we just kept him down there and played with him and got to know him a little bit better and he got to know us better well it because we didn't know it was a he yet uh, we figured, though, because he's a pretty big kitty, um, and if it was a male, it had been neutered. So, we befriended this cat. It's very comfortable where he was at in the basement, and um, still a very skittish with a lot of things cat. So, we ended up because we were like, we know eventually we're going to have to take this cat to the vet. So we ended up starting to just leave the cat carrier in the basement and put its wet food, its treat, in the carrier. So it would go in there and uh, be familiar with it. So uh, as it turned out, our Neo kitty that was upstairs, the black and white kitty girl who loved her belly, belly rubs, um, started having heart failure and uh, we ended up having to take her to the emergency vet and told her the whole story about uh, you know the seizures and all that stuff we never had any imaging done because of the seizures and they're like, well, this is a very emergent situation, so we are going to go ahead and put her out and do the imaging. And uh, turns out that she was full of cancer, uh, and it was getting into her lungs and all that stuff. So we ended up putting her down while we were at the emergency vet, and 
that that was just absolutely devastating. She was my soulmate kitty. Um, and we do have her ashes, and they are in my art room. Uh, I believe I've showed them in a video, and next to a stuffed cow. She absolutely loved that cow, and she would snuggle with it, and they just kind of blended together, because they were, they were the same colors, black and white. Um, so then we were like, okay, I think it is now time to see if Spooky, because we ended up naming the basement kitty Spooky. Uh, she's an all black cat. Upstairs. I mean, there's no reason not to take him upstairs now. So we got him into the carrier barely um, and got him to the vet, which was a crazy ordeal. He did not like it at all. And um, found out that he was, in fact, a neutered male, so he was somebody's animal at some point. Um, and totally forgot to throw this in there. He has a huge scar around about three quarters of his neck. And I do not want to know why that's there. Because if I found out it was something that a person did, I would have to hunt them down. Anywho. Um... We left the room when they did everything because uh, we don't want him to associate us with an unpleasant vet visit. So, and it was during COVID, so we couldn't go in there anyway, now that I think about it. Anyway, uh, he, <laughs> when they called us in to get him, they're like, oh, he's the sweetest sweetest, nicest kitty. Oh my goodness, he's just so sweet. And we're like, what cat are you talking about? Um, but okay, we'll take it. So uh, we get him back from the vet and we're like, you know, what? we're just going to take him right upstairs. So got back, brought him upstairs. We're like, man, we are not going to see him for like days. He's just going to be hiding and we're not, we're not going to see him. And within an hour, he was laying on the bed, laying on the bed, just like, oh, okay, I'm home. Cool. I'm not in a gross basement anymore. Awesome. And he has just, he has flourished. He has flourished. He's still a scaredy cat. He does not like women other than myself. Uh, he's definitely a daddy's boy. He, he loves his daddy. He's very vocal with his dad, but not with me. Um, I think it's because I'm just another cat to him. I don't know. Because I know grown cats only meow at, at humans. So, I don't know. We both get our lovin's though. We're just, we just have very different roles. So, that's okay. And every day he's, he's growing, he's making strides. It is just a fantastic thing to be a part of. And just when you think that your, your heart can't take any more awesome kittiness, uh, out comes another kitty, uh, outside a cat that we've seen for a while. Um, small, small kitty, so, uh, we assumed female, and we made yet another house because it was going to get cold, so this one we made, it was like a super solid three room, awesome, like two inch dense styrofoam insulation three room bungalow. It, it, yeah, and it was behind the stairs, which has a little roof up on a platform, so it wasn't just down on the ground. Uh, very well guarded from the elements, which Spooky's was too, but not a fancy house. Uh, and this cat was very insanely feral. Uh, super feral, 
uh, looked young, very small, and I don't think it had ever had any, like, real human interaction, and if it was, it was probably not good. Um, and she used the house all through the winter, and, um, we just continued to feed her and water her into the spring, and she, we would only see her, we have security cameras, so we would only see her come around at night on the security cameras, uh, if we happened to catch her while she was out there. I'm gonna get a drink, pardon if you hear the bottle opening. Um, so she used the house. Um, but like I said, we would only see her at night. So on camera. And it was spring sometime, early, early spring. And uh, my boyfriend was putting food in. It was probably late morning, 11-ish, 10, 11-ish, and uh, out the cat comes running, and he scared him, scared the cat, scared my boyfriend, and uh, he's like, okay, that's weird. Didn't think much of it. And then it was like a couple days later, and it happened again. And he told me, and I was like, that's that is weird, you know, either she's injured or whatever, I'm like, I wonder if she's had kittens, and, uh, the next day we went and looked in there, and there was three little furry, tiny, tiny little furry fur balls, um, two little gray tigers, and one just pure white, and we're like, oh my gosh, so, left him alone, whatever, we would, you know, every once in a while go and check on him and make sure everything's okay, and apparently mama didn't like that, so one day we were checking on him, and two of them were gone, and it was just the white one in there, and we're like, what the crap? But we could hear them. So we were trying to figure out where they were, we didn't want them to, and it was still cold, it was wet, it was gross. Um, and these were like fresh out of the oven babies. So, and like I said, we could hear them, but we couldn't find them. So we're looking around, looking around, moving all kinds of crap. Um, mom hightails it, of course, because, you know, we're back in the space. And the two little gray tiger babies were outside of the house. Like I said, it was cold and rainy and yucky, like sitting in this tiny little crevice uh, between a brick wall and the platform that the house was on in the mud. And so we're like crap. And we picked them up and we put them back in the house. And then we had, we had to leave. We had to go to work. So we went to work, came back. It was probably eight or nine hours later, and uh, checked on the cats, and this time, white kitty was gone, mama was gone, the two little babies were, two little tiger were like, crap, we touched the cats, she doesn't want them anymore, and then I looked it up, and I guess that's not the case, mama, mama kitties don't care if you touch the kittens, so I was like, whew. So looked on uh, security camera TV, went back and looked to see, you know, had mama been around? Where's white kitten? Uh, what's going on? So um, it was actually only like five minutes after we had left to go to work uh, that she had taken white kitten and went completely across the parking lot behind our building and across the street and onto another block. So, and then I kept watching, kept watching, kept watching, and she hadn't been back at all. And these two little kittens were shivering and mewling and, um, we're like, you know, they're this young, they've got to eat like every couple of hours. They're probably hungry. Mom is nowhere to be found. So, 
and again, it's cold. It's still cold. It was very early spring. So we ended up taking the two little tiny kittens into the house. And um, this was on Memorial Weekend. This past Memorial Weekend. So, uh, and we had a job. We had a job that we had to do that weekend. And it had to be on the weekend because the people could not be there while we were trying to do it. So it was something that had been arranged and something we had to do. And we stayed up all night and every two hours we fed these kitties. And thank goodness my boyfriend's niece works at the uh, Humane Society so, or I believe it's Humane Society. Anyway, she ended up coming and getting them the next morning so that they could still get fed and we could go to work. Um, she kept them over the weekend and nursed them until the holiday weekend was over and they both together had a foster family by, you know, Tuesday. So that all worked out fantastic. Um, Still, we did not know where Mama Kitty and Little White Kitten was. But it took a couple of days, but Mama Kitty came back and she was either looking for the other two kittens or just getting food. I don't know. Um, and then going back over across the parking lot and across the street. And... Uh, we're like, okay, Mama Kitty's still alive, so that means that little other kitty's probably still alive. So we were okay with that. And we weren't gonna like go searching through other people's yards and stuff to find it. So I'm gonna say about a month later, we, well, my boyfriend was on a different job site and this orange and white cat comes running across the street and jumps into his van because he had, didn't even get out of the van yet. He was just, uh, he had just got to the job site and was, he opened the door, I guess he was on the phone and he was just sitting in the car talking to the phone with the van door open. Um, weather was a bit nicer then, so you could do that. Cat comes tearing across the street jumps in the van and is rubbing all over him and meowing and rubbing all over him and so you know Rob being Rob reaches his hand down starts petting him and he's like huh uh, apparently his cat was like super tore up and in, like severely injured and he's like goes into the house and is doing you know, work and left the cat outside and this cat is just meowing and meowing and meowing and meowing at the door, meowing at the door, would not go away. And so he calls me and he's like, get the cat carrier ready. I'm going to bring this cat home. So I'm expecting him to come and pick up the cat carrier and then go back and get the cat. Uh, no, he comes back. He's already got the cat with him and the cat was in fact insanely tore up like bad. It, it almost made me cry, but I held it together. <laughs> um, and it was like all around his neck. So I don't know if it was from something being around his neck or if a dog got a hold of him and just tore the ever loving crap out of him or what? I don't know. But this, this kitty, um, and this one was not neutered, obviously a boy, uh, and n either a runt or not fully grown, it's not a huge boy cat, um, was asking for help. Was asking for help, and by golly, did he come to the right people. So, we ended up taking him in, and um, he started out in the basement, which we actually cleaned up. So, it is very cat friendly now um and we spent a lot of time down there with him and 
he's a very, very affectionate kitty, very lovey. He just wanted to lay on us. I'm sure he was not feeling the greatest because he was very tore up and uh, left him down there the first night and then got up the next morning and went down and checked on him and there he was just bleeding everywhere. So we're like, wow. I mean, that's quite possibly the worst thing that you could see when you have an injured cat. And But um, he was just digging at it. So... Uh, we had devised, well, I had figured out that he, you know, some kind of bandaging, but obviously it can't be tight because it's around his neck. He couldn't have a cone because of how it was and where it was. It, it would have been bad because everything was just open and gross. It, it would have cut into it. So... And cutting off a sock and then to keep it in place because it kind of went down onto his chest and down down his neck a little bit um i cut some cotton gauze strips and tied it around so he had like this sock around his neck and a little bow around his back it was pretty dang cute um so did that and we got him into the vet pretty quick, actually. They looked him over. They liked my bandage, so we continued doing that so he wouldn't dig at it and all that stuff. Uh, and he walks on a leash, which is awesome. So we would take him outside every once in a while. And I forgot to tell you, which if you've watched any of my videos, you would know that Spooky, the black cat that is upstairs fetches. He is a fetcher. He likes to play with his mouse. Anyway, back to the orange and white kitty. He was in the basement for a couple of days and like I said, we were spending a lot of time down there, which we decided we don't want to spend a lot of time in the basement. So, um, my boyfriend, while I was spending a lot of time in the basement, was making all kinds of ruckus upstairs. I was like, what is he doing? He didn't even tell me what he was doing. Uh, and then he calls me up, and he had made in a huge section of the store. I mean, it's, it's a big room. The cat apartment. Uh, it's, from the outside, it looks like a homeless encampment because it's just, like, odds and ends thrown together to make walls and a bunch of... Um, cardboard kind of on the top to race it up higher so you can't just jump over it so the homeless encampment slash cat apartment in you know a good section of the main part of our store which you know, is only open by appointment so whatever um yeah. he uh so we brought him upstairs he was in the apartment and we kept him enclosed in there for a long time and he had one of us down there with him 24 7 for a few months because I mean he was he was bad he we had to kind of chase him around and make sure he didn't scratch at stuff or open up his his wounds again even with a bandage on like he would get caught in the bandage too so we'd have to like you get claws out of his bandage and stuff like that he didn't even, I mean, he, he must have not felt the greatest because he didn't even play for, like, a really long time. He just wanted to cuddle and eat and cuddle. That's, that's all he wanted to do, eat, sleep, and cuddle. So, that's what we did. And, uh, like I said, he was always enclosed in, in that apartment area, so... And we had a couch in there, so we would just sleep on the couch, too, which was not bad. It wasn't bad at all. I, I actually kind of miss having my, my snuggle times with, with Binks, because we're not doing that now. But, um, after a while, we kind of let him roam free in the store, and he did really well with that until we found out he was getting into the plants, because I have a lot of plants in there, so we blocked all those off, and then we figured out that he could negate what we did to block off the plants and he was he actually knocked a plant over and then started peeing in the dirt that he knocked on the floor so 
yeah that had to stop so we actually well i actually moved all of the plants because it was summertime over into the other half of the store we have like three storefronts that are kind of connected so moved it over in the other side so we have very limited window space obviously only in the front and not even really in the back so uh plants were over there and then like I said he was just kind of wandering the store freely which was cool like when we were there and then we would put him in the apartment and then finally I was just like you know what? we're just gonna leave him out overnight and see what happens and it was totally fine so he's just had free run of the the whole store for quite a while uh and then there was an evening that I was out watering my container garden flowers out in the back of the store and uh, I was hearing this noise and I couldn't quite figure out what it was. I'm like, what is this noise? And I'm just, you know, watering plants and then I see something kind of shot, shoot out from under the planters and so I just dropped the hose and went to see what it was and it was a little kitten and I'm like are you effing kidding me so <laughs> I'm chasing this little kitten around and it goes behind the stairs and I'm chasing it around I finally catch it and it's kind of this like white and gray Siamese-ish looking kitten and we always kept the we always keep the doors locked on the store because we don't want somebody to just walk in and hold the door open and let one of the cats out so um door is locked and I just knock on the door and my boyfriend's in there and he just assumes that Binks is sitting by the back door which he likes to do and it's hard to open the door because it opens in yeah because he's sitting right there so he assumed that Binks was in the way and he came to open the door for me and I'm just holding up this kitten like whoa look there's another cat and he throws his hands in the air and I can see him mouth some choice words <laughs> so he opens the door and I'm like I bet you this is the little white kitten I mean I wasn't completely sure but I was like I bet you this is the little white kitten and uh, we took that kitten in and put it down in the basement because we wouldn't you know I had no idea how you know Binks would react to this little other little kitten so, yeah, Orange and White Kitty got named Banks. I keep leaving little things out. Sorry. So, we now have Spooky in the apartment upstairs. We have Binks roaming around in the store. And we have this little white kitten, which had to be close to the age of weaning from its mom. Uh in the basement and that night lo and behold because I'm you know staying in the store at night overnight with Binks because he's injured uh, Binks is at the door meowing meow meow and I'm like what are you meowing at and there's mama cat on the other side of the door this is a full glass door you know where's my cat where's my kitten where's my little kitten and i'm like okay so yes this was the little white fluff ball and uh so binks is talking to mama kitty and i'm like okay little babies in the basement i take binks put him close him into the apartment and i open the back door to see if mama cat would come in and look out there and of course there's a freaking tom following her i'm like okay and they actually both of them almost came in the store but not far enough to where i could you know stay where i was at and close the door so they were trapped in the store so couldn't get mama kitty in couldn't get mama kitty in couldn't get mama kitty in that tom was following her for a couple of days and finally we're like, okay, we need to get a trap or something to get Mama Kitty. Couldn't get anywhere near her. Nowhere near at all. So, got a live trap. Took us 
three tries. Uh, she ended up getting trapped in there. We brought her in and took her down into the basement with her baby. And, you know, we thought we had really, really kitty proofed the basement, which, I mean, we did. But somehow, don't know how, she finds the one spot that, you know, she could get away from us in, and it was like the worst possible spot ever. It's just, it's, there's a shelf down there, and it's like a two by four, the two inch part, inch and a half really, uh, width of the board, a far, far from the, the stone wall, foundation wall. So she was hiding behind the shelf on this little two inch space between a stone wall and the back of a shelf. And I mean, she would go way back in there, like seven or eight feet. So the only way we could tell she was actually in there was to like lean way over because we couldn't even get, we didn't have access to it. So we would hold our phone way over to like where the opening was and turn the flash on and take a picture. And if we could see her eyes, then we would know that she was in there. And this was what she did for a very, 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 very long time. And we never saw her outside of that. Um, but we did know that she was using the litter box and we did know that she was uh, feeding kitten because kitten was good. And we did know that she was eating. So eating and drinking water. So she would come out at some point. Uh, but not ever when we saw her. But uh, kitten would play with us, do all kinds of stuff, was just having all kinds of fun. So... We uh, had them both down there together for a while. Binks uh, was still in the store and Spoopy still in the apartment. So all these cats on three different levels and they still are, which it's been a very long time. And doing all three levels with all these cats is an insane amount of work. Uh, having five cats, period, is a lot of work, but having them on three separate floors is crazy. <laughs> Anywho, uh, it got to where Kitten was uh, still very much Kitten and was trying, like, figured out how to uh, get up on this platform to get Mama's food, and that was not good because he was eating it and not doing good. Like, he got sick. So we then were like, okay, what are we going to do to keep this kitten from eating the grown-up food and getting sick? And um, I'm like, okay, where else can we put this to where Mama can still get it? And he can't. So um, turns out there was not any place that we could put it down there that she could get it and he could not. So... We ended up getting these, it's like four foot by four foot by five foot tall, multi-level like cage things. And uh, I got that and I assembled it and we brought Kitten up and put him in that in the store with Binks. So, they kind of get along, but not really. <laughs> uh, Binks is a little rough with them, so we still keep them somewhat separate, but they interact, obviously. Um, so, they're in the same space. Binks runs all over the place. And when, we're, when we were actually in the store, which is quite a bit. We take, we named little, little white fluff ball Tibbs. We take him out and put him in the apartment and Binks is still running free in the rest of the store, but Tibbs can't get out of what we call the apartment in the store. So they all have their crazy playtime. They get to run around. He's not always in the cage. It's all good to go. But even when he is in the cage, that, that little 
white fluff ball Tibbs is a climber. He is a climber. Oh my goodness. And he'll just hang by one claw like it's nuts. Um, so Tibbs in the cage, Binks running around in the store, Mama Cat still in the basement, still hiding, and going back to when she was looking for the kitten. She had that Tom following her, and we're like, man, we don't know if she's pregnant again. She probably is. We don't want her having babies back in that dank, tiny little space that, that they would not survive. So that platform where her food was that Tibbs figured out how to get to is like a, an 8 foot by 10 foot giant table platform. That's where uh, they would make their custom rugs. So it was a pretty good sized platform. And so we in completely enclosed the bottom of it and then made an enclosure on the top of it. So it's this two story 8 foot by 10 foot giant, you know, all the way up to the ceiling from floor to ceiling with, you know, the table in between to, uh, put Mama Kitty in. And, uh, we brought the house in that was outside that she had the other kittens in because she knew the house and she knew it was a safe place. So we put that underneath for her and, uh, obviously food, water, litter, all that stuff. And we got her in, I mean, we had to trap her again in the basement. We had to trap her again because we can't get anywhere near her. Still can't. Um, well, kind of. We'll get there. Uh, we had to trap her again and get her, to get her into that enclosure. Because she would still, every time we were down there, she was in that little crevice. So... Trapped her, got her in there, and just in time because no more than three days later, she had another kitten. Um, just one that we're aware of. If she had any more, they didn't survive. Um, there's just one kitten. It is a pretty decent-sized kitten, and both Mama and Kitten are doing well. So, Mama and Kitten are living in the, what we call, the cat castle in the basement, and Big Brother is up in the cat cage, sometimes in the cat apartment. And then Binks, the brother from another mother, is doing well. He was all healed up, and I don't know what happened, but he currently has another little something going on on his neck. Um, I don't know, but it's covered. Well, I made him another sock, but it doesn't have to be all tied, which is awesome. So he's got another sock collar, and... Uh, He's in the store and Spooks is still up here and we keep talking to Spooks about having other kitties up here and I'm not sure how he's going to handle that but he is, he's absolutely the boss. Um, I very recently, within the last week, two weeks, have uh, given up half of my art room. Yes, I did that. Um, I love kitties and there's actually other reasons behind that too, but, um, I gave up half of my art room to bring up, we're going to do it one at a time. I think we're going to bring Tibbs up first. Um, and he's going to be in the art room because there's only two rooms in this whole apartment that we can actually secure because it's a very, very old building. Um, very chopped up, very weird, and not all of the doors are in openings. So there's only two rooms, which would be the art room and the closet, which is actually used to be a bedroom, and then we turned it into a giant closet. And I don't think I want a very climby, clawy cat in my closet. So art room it is. So I took my table out of the art room, I put it in the living room, Moved a bunch of my reading books out of the living room and brought all of my art stuff, not all of it, some of it into the living room. And so now I'm coloring in the living room and I am assembling a cage, one of those big four foot 
by four foot by five foot cages in the art room. And that is where Tibbs is going to go, where we can close doors and they can sniff under doors. And we've actually been doing a lot of research on, you know, how to properly introduce another cat into the area. Um, Spooky, he's recovered nicely, but it took him a while to even be okay with us changing the furniture around. So it's going to be very interesting to see how he reacts to another kitty. Uh, He was so upset by us moving furniture around that he hid his mouse, his very special mouse that he fetches, uh, in his litter. Because, you know, you're not getting my mouse and this is my safe spot. So it took us like a whole day and four thorough searches of our whole domicile to find the mouse in the litter box. Um, that was a very interesting day. And, uh, that's where we're at. Uh, so the other thing, um, about me giving up part of my art room is that one of our tenants very recently purchased a house and they are actually moving out this very weekend. Um, they were supposed to be doing it starting today, but uh, we haven't seen any movement or whatever. Uh, so possibly tomorrow. So, uh, crazy craziness, um, which will be Sunday the 16th, I believe. I think today's the 15th. I don't know. Anyway, um, moving out and we are going to turn that apartment into the art slash possible Binks being a bachelor because he's not very nice to other kitties. We are going to see if he'll be nice to the other kitties in this apartment, though, before we just, you know, put him over there. But, uh, Binks, possibly over there, art room, and a, uh, workout room. It is a very small apartment, so, uh, we'll see how that goes. And, uh, so I would have... A decent one decent sized room and probably part of the kitchen which would be helpful because I need water quite a bit um, and an exercise room which would be fantastic I have a couple ideas for that too and uh, yeah so our apartment all kinds of kitties moving up here and uh, We're going to figure out after little, little baby kitten, which mama has been dubbed Mrs. Whiskers. So we call them mama and baby whiskers. And Tibbs, whose you know, mom is Mrs. Whiskers, is Tibbethy S, which stands for stinky whiskers. Tibbethy stinky whiskers. Uh, yeah. And, uh, after we, you know, after baby is old enough to be weaned, which he's not right now, then we will take mama whiskers in somehow. We'll figure it out, um, and get her fixed. And I'm still hoping that I can get her to at least somewhat enjoy some human interaction. She's... She lets me get close enough to talk to her. I have handled Little Kitten. Um, Not much, but I have. He's quite playful. And gotten him a few toys. And they do move around when I'm not down there. So they're playing with him. And... uh, she, She will let me talk to her while she's in the house with the baby. And... We, we just made this, like, observation window in it so that we can, you know, check on them. And she'll stay in there and let me talk to her and all that stuff. And, I don't know, she's got an issue with one of her eyes. So that's another thing that she needs to go to the vet for. But for regardless of whether we can rehab her or not, we're going to take her to the vet and get her fixed. And um, 
if we have to put her back outside, we have to put her back outside. But at least she won't be having any more kittens. So, um, and she's so small. She's just such a very small kitty. Which makes her kitten seem huge. And I don't even think it's a huge kitten. It's just that she's so small. And, uh, kitten is doing well. We're going to have to figure out eventually what to do with him. Also, I honestly have no idea if we could handle five kitties. I mean, we have been handling five kitties, but they're not all together. So, I don't know. Much, 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 much more to come. And, uh, I will do more videos with actual videos of kitties and processes and... We plan to do videos of the whole process of, you know, doing the apartment across the hall and all that stuff too. So stay tuned and I will now put music to the rest of the coloring video. Uh, thank you so much for sticking around and listening. And if you got this far, please comment an orange kitty emoji, yellow kitty, or a black kitty emoji, so I know that you listened to the whole story. Alright, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.